Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Samson. So not too long ago I had a run which I titled Critical Failure and I feel like that title is very applicable to this run as well. Not only because I made some very weird decisions throughout the run but also I feel like because there's one very critical decision which ended up costing me just the whole run as a whole and I feel like that's that that's something that you really can't escape it's just bound to happen but it does feel bad when you know that one single decision that you made throughout the run essentially cost you a really good ranking in the end and it could have been the difference between a loss or a win in some cases and what I think that is not what I think but what I know that is is the very first treasure room so I entered it there was an item called blood rights in there if you don't know what an item blood rights does it's actually a beautiful item you use it you trade some of your health away particularly one full red card and you get some damage in return and obviously that's already pretty good because you because you can use it a lot of times if you have enough red health containers you can use it pretty much to stack up on a lot of damage and just pretty much instantly kill most of the bosses uh, but with a character like samson it works even better because it stacks with your passive so now suddenly whenever you use this item not only are you getting the damage from the blood rights as an active item, but you're also getting damage from your passive. And that's pretty good, but obviously I didn't pick it up, so why didn't I pick it up? Because if it's such a good item, of course I, I should have picked it up in the first place. And the reason was, I thought it actually increased your damage penalty. And as it turns out, it actually doesn't. And I, when, I, when I realized this, after I went to the Reddit threads and read through some of them, uh, I was bewildered. I was so surprised, I just couldn't believe it. Because I was sure that this item increased your damage penalty and just to realize that it actually doesn't was surprising to me and looking back on it it would have been the difference between actually using this item and not using it uh, it would be a difference if I would be able to get to boss rush to hush and just how much damage I would take overall not only would it allow us to be much stronger in the very first and the second floor because at that point we have two red health containers and obviously you can use them to kind of stack up on damage and use it against bosses and things like that uh, it would allow us to just kind of cruise through those enemies just so much easier. Uh, we would take so much damage overall because like the first floor with the Larry, Larry Jr. boss fight, there were three of them in there, which I think is the hardest combo of any Larry Jr. boss fight. And that particular one is difficult because there are a lot of ran there is a lot of random movement and sometimes you just end up getting cornered. And in my particular case, actually I ended up getting hit three times. But if I did have the blood rights, not only would I have more damage, uh, because I would stack it up throughout the floor with, of course, my passive, but also I would be able to use the blood rights in that very same room to increase my damage just for the duration of the room, and that would also just kind of help me out, take them out a little bit faster. Uh, not only that, uh, what also this item would allow us to do is kind of change our strategy. Like, it would definitely influence which items we would perceive as good or bad. And later on, of course, we found a lot of HP upgrades, and if you don't have an item like that one, there's no reason to pick it up. But obviously, if I did have blood rights, then suddenly items like uh, moldy bread, or in this case, the bandage, become so much better, because they give you more health, and of course, with more health, that means you can use more uh, more of your active charges to actually get stacked on more damage. And if you have, an, uh, if you have a trinket... Uh, that you start out with Charles Hart, you just increase the likelihood of getting more red hearts uh, to replace the ones that you've traded away for your damage. And obviously all of those things together would work really well and it would just allow us to really go through the levels uh, much, much easier. And it would have been the difference between us actually not being able to get to Boss Rush and Hush in the first place to actually being able to not only make it to there, but pretty much be in a position where we take no damage. And of course th that particular part is just due to the stopwatch. And stopwatch, what it does is when you get hit, it slows down every single enemy in the room for the next duration of the room. And that's just so super powerful, because not only do you have this effect essentially on a spacebar item, but also every time you use it, because of the piggy bank, we're also gonna be getting some money. And at some point, of course, later on, we get two steam cells, or there's a possibility of getting two steam cells, and there is restock, and just having a way to have basically infinite money uh, will, will allow you to not only break the game in basically every single way imaginable, but also it would allow you to not take any damage, because every single enemy, as soon as you enter the room, will be slowed. So now you compare what I just said uh, to what we have now. So we have base damage, basically no way to actually increase our damage outside of going to the curse room, but we really can't, because we also have no uh, disposable HP. At some point we have the Satanic Bible, but I replaced it with White Feather, because I thought this would be just a little bit offensively more powerful. Like, I thought this would allow us to get to Boss Rush, 
and in boss rush we could use it every every other way to hopefully maybe snipe a boss or two and that would allow us to just kind of go through this enemies a little bit quicker and maybe that would allow us to get to harsh but sadly it didn't really turn out that way and my my decisions were I, I think a bit reprimanded but it doesn't really matter uh, but we did have satanic bubble at a certain point of course I lost it but this means that now I can't really uh, trade my health away in order to get uh, maybe other benefits I did try to do it on this floor just in hopes of maybe getting to harsh as fast as possible but it didn't again work out and I was kind of stuck in a, in a ditch where I, I really couldn't see myself getting out of it. But but uh, we are stuck basically at base damage. We have basically, I mean, we have 6-3 delay, which is obviously pretty good. But as a consequence, we also have a lot of sh high shot speed. And a high shot speed and a very low tier delay is actually quite detrimental. Because you're shooting very fast, which means you're landing a lot of your hits on the enemy. Because of the high shot speed, the knockback is naturally higher. But with a tear delay, with, with so low, you're essentially missing half of your shots because the first shot is bouncing the enemy away and it bounces it in a pre pretty unpredictable direction because there's also the random movement that you have to account for. And then you have to land the second shot. And if you do land the second shot, then they're gonna get bounced even further beyond. And essentially, at some point, you're just gonna miss until they kind of reset and then you can start shooting at them again. And that's not that big of a deal. Like, I'm make it, maybe making it out to be a bigger deal than it is. But having a high shot speed is really one of those things which messes with my aim the most and it just wants some, some things which I really can't control. I feel like whenever I have a high shot speed run I just get stuck in a position where I feel like half of my, if not even more of my shots actually don't end up hitting the enemy. And that's obviously quite bad. But if we had blood rights, not only would our tier delay help us, uh, because obviously we're shooting very fast, but we would essentially be killing enemies in one or two shots. So that would make it just a little bit easier to navigate and kind of manage this high shot speed with low tier delay uh, just throughout the rest of the run. And as, of course, as the run goes on, you can you can see it just keep getting better. And we got a kind of a makeshift blood rights at this point because of safety razor. And safety razor, whenever you use it, every other room, uh, you're, you're not only going to be able to mitigate some of the damage, because what it does, it triggers fake damage, which means that you're, every single item that you have that gets triggered on damage will get triggered, but your damage, uh, you won't actually receive any damage, like nothing will happen, just those items will trigger. And that works both for his passive, your damage increases, it works for the stopwatch, and it also works for basically any other item that we have, in this case I think only the piggy bank. And that's great, because not only does this allow us to stack up on damage very fast, but if if we feel like there's a very hard room, we can use it, kind of do everything with the negative, and also slow the rest of the enemies down. So I felt like this would be uh, a, a good way to actually go through the rest of the game. It would it essentially nullifies bosses, boss fights like Mega Satan, uh, because if everything is slowed, you can pretty much dodge everything, there's no problem in that. And you can just kind of go and cruise through those fights uh, without that big of a problem. And of course, uh, at a certain point, I was just thinking, this is what this run could have been if I actually picked up Blood Rites much early on. And of course, at this point, it's a little bit too little, too late, uh, just because now we've already missed Boss Rush, we've already missed Harsh. So this, even though this is a really good combo with the Safety Razor, it just doesn't really help us out that much. And we're just, uh, we, we, I guess we're just seeing what this run could have been, but it didn't really turn out to be that way. It's a bummer, like I said before, but I feel like like it's an honest mistake and if there's no other reason for this video to exist I hope it's just to show you that there there is an item called blood rights and then you should take it if of course there's a chance to take it and if it's a good item to take in that particular situation uh, which will not increase your damage penalty because it, it, knowing that I feel like this run could have gone so much better and so much more differently but hey what can you do about it we're all bound to make mistakes at some point I didn't really expect this to make this one and I'm not really sure how that belief even came into my head from the very first like in, in the first place uh, I, I think I was reading some of the reddit threads about damage penalty and it had like a few of the examples listed it said oh if you use the ivy bag you're not gonna take damage penalty if you're gonna use uh, the razor blade you're not gonna take the damage penalty but it said nothing about blood right so I was just like oh so that means that blood rights probably does do damage penalty to you and I just never I guess saw anyone mention it just like they used it uh, but but in retrospect it doesn't make sense for it not to actually influence your damage penalty because every active item that you have a uh, dozen at this point, and I think it's pretty safe to assume that basically every active item that you have where you trigger damage to yourself is not going to count to your damage penalty, and I think besides the two items I've mentioned, Blood Rites is really only the third item that, that kind of falls into that category. But oh well, like I said, it's 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 a bit disappointing in some regard, but also I'm kind of glad to have learned this at this point. It could have been some, so much worse, like maybe this run could have actually ended up in a much different place. And at least we saw the potential this run had with the Safety Razor, 
And the run kind of rewarded us at the end with the Brimstone and also this tiny planet. We also had the S Worm. It's not S Worm. It's whatever worm. But so so we got this cool effect. So I, I felt like the run kind of made it up to me in some case, and I was able to kind of get and really kind of spiral out of control at the end. And it was it was enjoyable to say the least. I did enjoy the run for what it was, especially from the point we got a safety razor. It really felt like I was in control of my own decisions and in my own fate. So we're just able to kind of get through it and really finish the run in a pretty comfortable spot. Our damage penalty wasn't that high. Surprisingly, I, I guess that is because of the safety razor, but we did miss both of the mo most important objectives in the game And our, our run could have been easily 50,000 points I think I saw someone at six, six, 67,000 which is like the theoretical highest limit you can get on a run uh, Which is crazy to say the least uh, But of course with the forget me now and other breaking chances You would be able to get that really really high and just just really kind of spiral out of control So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this run guys, and I hope to see you next time